Hi, and welcome back to the next video in the series. This video will cover hormone replacement therapy in the menopause, which can be a tricky subject clinically and for re-exams. First and foremost, we need to establish actually how to diagnose menopause. By definition, it is a clinical diagnosis, with the average age being around 51 years old. It's defined as the absence of period of 12 months when not on hormonal contraception. However, a clinical diagnosis is needed when a patient is without a uterus. Perimenopausal symptoms are defined based on vasomotor symptoms and or irregular periods where premature menopause is defined as occurring before the age of 40. A clinical diagnosis is however needed in the following scenarios. In a patient aged lower than 40, aged 40 to 45 with menopausal symptoms, or aged above 50 and on long-acting reversible contraception. And we do this by performing an FSH, or follicle stimulating hormone, which would be positive if it's raised twice, six weeks apart. Most of the symptoms of the menopause can be categorised into four groups, vasomotor, urogenital, mental, or sexual. The current recommendations are for individualised symptom control per patient, particularly if the symptoms aren't tolerated. Those with premature menopause should also have HRT continued until at least the age of 50 to aid the prevention of osteoporosis. However, in terms of prescribing, we usually use cyclical preparations if the patient is pre- and perimenopausal. This is to preserve the monthly period or continuous preparations in postmenopausal patients. What's most important is every patient would need estrogen replacement, but progesterone only to be given in those ladies with a uterus. The sticky situation with HRT usually boils down to risks, and a lot has played out in the media and publicly about the risks and downsides of HRT, which isn't normally always true. However, for your exams, you need to know the following. There is an increased risk of breast cancer with combined HRT, but the risk of death isn't any higher than the general population, or an obese lady who has a few glasses of wine on the weekend. There isn't any increased risk with estrogen alone regimes. There is an increased risk of ovarian cancer whilst on HRT, and there's a minimal increased risk of coronary heart disease while on HRT, but a nil if on estrogen-only regimes. There's a slight increase in VTE with oral HRT, but a nil with transdermal forms. There's a slight increased risk of stroke with oral estrogens, but minimal to none on transdermal forms. As you can see, this is extremely confusing so each patient needs to be appropriately counselled before you prescribe. When it actually comes down to using HRT, we usually base it off the symptoms. Vasomotor symptoms are often treated with HRT combined if it's a uterus present, or estrogen alone if no uterus is present. Herbal remedies such as black cohosh and St John's wort can also help. HRT is also useful when cognition and mood is affected because of the menopause, with CBT also helpful, although the role of SSRIs for mood change in this particular circumstance is debatable. Vaginal estrogens can be used if there's predominantly urogenital symptoms even on top of a tablet or patch HRT, and sexual dysfunction can be managed with counselling or testosterone therapy, although this is an unlicensed therapy in the UK. We monitor patients typically every three months, and then annually with a BMI and cardiovascular risk profile, with any unscheduled bleeding after the initial three months breakthrough bleeding considered to be abnormal and warrants investigations. However, you also need to be aware of a few contraindications, which include past or current breast cancer, estrogen sensitive cancers, endometrial cancer or undiagnosed vaginal bleeding, extensive and severe liver disease, or active thromboembolic disease such as an active stroke or angina. There is also debate about stopping HRT, which still really hasn't had any fixed guidance. But the current advice is that it should be considered to stop when risks outweigh the benefits, with risks of breast cancer in particular increasing with length of time. Well, that's that in a whistle-stop tour of HRT. I hope this video helps to kill you with the groundwork of HRT and the menopause, both through exams and clinically. If you found it useful, be sure to leave a thumbs up to show your appreciation and subscribe. Comment below for any requests or questions, but otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.